You're listening to Simon Scriver's amazingly ultimate fundraising superstar podcast, talking all things fundraising, charities, nonprofits, and more. Here's your host, as always, Simon Scriver. Good day to you. Thank you very much for joining me today. And we are back on the podcast. We are also um, publishing this on video because because video is an, possibly an important part of what we're talking about today. Um, as you all know that listen to this, uh, I try to share my struggles, of which I have many of them, uh, and my challenges. And every, every episode, I try to learn and be better um, by talking to an expert. Um, so today, what I wanted to try and address are bullet journals. Um, and you may have heard of them. Um, they are supposed to get you more organized. And everyone keeps telling me how much more organized I will be if I have a bullet journal, because I struggle with that. Um, and so the first thing I did was I reached out to someone that people keep telling me is an expert on bullet journals. My guest for today, Caroline Danks. Hello, Caroline. Hi, Simon. Thank you for that introduction. Wow. Yeah. An expert on bullet journals. Look, I've even got a little banner for you here. <laughs> which uh, oh on the video, which says <laughs> Caroline Danks, Bullet Journal Queen. Is, is that accurate? That's amazing. I'm going to add that to my yeah. Twitter bio. And That's add it to your funny. LinkedIn. Um, yeah, um, yeah. So besides, before we get on to Bullet Journals, Caroline, could, uh, could you maybe tell us uh, who on earth you are? Yeah, of course. So my name is Caroline Danks. I'm a fundraising consultant. Um, I specialise in high value fundraising consultancy. So my... Um, the areas where I tend to be a practitioner are trusts and foundations, major gifts, and capital appeals. I'm also a bit of a capital appeal queen. I've run about five in the last three years. An insane Str- number of capital appeals. Uh, yeah, they, they, they can be. I, I feel very much at home raising money for a capital appeal, and, and I really enjoy enjoy that kind of work. So. I mean, that's me in a nutshell. I run um, Lark Owl, which is mm-hmm. my fundraising consultancy, which I run with my, my darling partner, who you can hear he's making coffee in the kitchen. Oh, It's very nice. exciting. Um, so, yeah, we, are, um, we run a fundraising consultancy that, that covers um, all aspects of fundraising. I don't, I, mean, I don't just cover the high value. I, I can mm-hmm. advise and support on, on all aspects, um, mm-hmm. although high value is my specialism. Um, and he supports charities with commercial income, so retail, catering, uh, visitor business, membership, um, and business planning in preparation for big bids, that kind of thing. Sure. And you work, you work all over the UK? Yeah. Yeah, we do. We do. And I've had a client in the States as well, which has been Okay. Fun. Okay. So um, but yeah, international. We do. <laughs> yeah, we do get around a bit, but we have young children, so we are, we're a little limited in in our travel we just have to be really organized which is why bullet journaling is so helpful (laughs) so i are you organized are you an organized person uh yes (laughs) i am am. say it say it with confidence caroline if you're um if you're a fan of gretchen rubin and her um four tendencies i'm very much an upholder so i tend to meet outer expectations and also inner expectations that i set for myself of course i have periods of not being organized and i feel Mm -hmm. really Mm -hmm. at sea I, you know, I'm a fundraiser. I'm a control freak. We, okay. we all are to some degree. Uh, so, yeah, yeah, okay. yeah I, I like to feel in control. Okay. So you uh, you came across my radar, well, a few times, but recently you've been speaking at conferences and, and teaching people how to bullet journal. Um, mm-hmm. And so I've just bought my bullet journal, and actually, you know, we can see it here. I'm bringing it up on the video. This is my, you know, I've, I've put my name in the front, um, but really I haven't done too much more with it. Um, so, you know, for people like me who don't really understand this yet, what is a bullet journal? Okay. So in a nutshell, a bullet journal is a way to record the past, organize the present and plan the future. And it was invented by an American chap called Ryder Carroll. Um, (laughs) and it's, it's basically an analog system for a digital age. And he and I and other fans of the Bullet Journal, I think, really, really appreciate the opportunity to get away from the screen and to make space in order to facilitate greater productivity. 
Mm-hmm. Because because I I have I mean to organize myself it's all online generally so far I used to make paper to do lists and now I have kind of to do lists uh, online I use things like Trello I use my calendar I use my inbox things like that yeah. um, but it feels like you know there is a challenge there there is a bit of a barrier for me um, in that organization and I think you know possibly because it is online yeah yeah. I absolutely agree. I think there are some tasks and I think there are plenty of tasks within fundraising that really benefit from you stepping away from the screen Mm -hmm. because there Mm -hmm. are distractions there that, yes, you can control them to some degree, but but you you also can't control them. It's very hard to limit the distractions that fly at us from from an online space. Mm -hmm. So... um, I've found that an analog system for organizing my life is um, has been really helpful. Yeah. yeah. And I'm, yeah, I'm really looking forward to talking through, um, yeah, practically how it looks and how it works. Yeah. Well, yeah. like, how, how do I start? Well, why, why is it called a bullet journal? Is it just because of all the dots? Yeah. yeah. Really? Oh, okay. Absolutely. I thought there'd be a better, better reason. Um, <laughs> yeah. Okay. So I have my bullet journal here. Um, so cool. I've gone out, I've bought like one of these little, um, what are they, A5 or, you know, yes. half, half a yes. big notebook thing. Um, and you can see it here. It's a little moleskin one. I tried to get a fancy design, but the shops didn't have it. Um, mm. And yeah. they, they didn't have all the dot ones. They had all like the squares, um, which actually I quite like because I'm, I'm a mathematician. I did maths in college. Yeah, and so square. Okay. is Bring that going to be a big problem? Okay. Is that going to be a problem? No, so, that's- it's That's kind of grid fine. things. So uh, yeah. I also assumed that um, this, I'm going to completely fuck up this first one. So <laughs> it's it wasn't too important. <laughs> well, what well, that's that's a really healthy attitude. So, oh, my God, there's a, <laughs> coffee. there's a coffee coming. Oh, wow. I'll edit this bit out. Where's my, where's my tea? Look at this. This is amazing. That's, that service. That's the Lark Owl service. It is. <laughs> It is. So, right, so fear of fucking up your bullet journal is like, it's a real excuse that I hear over and over again for people not wanting to start one. So yeah. a bit of advice, if you're a bit nervous about starting and trying some layouts out and experimenting, just get an, just get like one of those notebooks that you get from a conference or uh-huh. a half-started uh-huh. notebook. And, uh-huh. you know, any notebook with a few spare pages in it, you can start to experiment with the bullet journal method. Um, So I think it's great that you appreciate that you might fuck it up, but you you can't really because it's yours. And if you do a page that you don't like, you're not happy with, just flip over and do another page. I I feel Um, like there's like a lot of pressure because when you start Googling these and you see the images of them, they're all like works of art. Like they're like really beautiful, (laughs) elaborate layouts. And, And I found that quite intimidating. Yeah, again, another reason why people think that this might not be for them. Mm. The way I use my bullet journal, um, I, I use my bullet journal in a really, really simple way. My bullet journal is a series of lists. Mm-hmm. Um, and I use I do not use it as a calendar. So there are some, some layouts, some sort of very basic layouts that um, are talked through in a really helpful video actually which Ryder Carroll the founder of Bullet Journal will talk you through so we can add a link to that video so people who are interested can watch that it's a good place to start Um, the sort of classic layouts that you get on a Bullet Journal are your calendar so you can use it as a calendar I actually don't use it as a calendar I use Google Calendar I'm happy with Google Calendar um, and I don't use my Bullet Journal as a calendar Okay. I do use it to plan out my week so we could, and I feel like that's quite a good place to start because then mm-hmm. you can go into more granular detail if you want, if you've got a very busy day and you want to plan out a day on one page. And then you can zoom out and you can do something called a future log where you plan out a period of months. Um, mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. we could start now, if you like, we could do a weekly log okay. Um, okay. in your bullet journal. So if you start with a double page. Let's do it. So actually, I just want to show you this first. On my first page, I started a list, and it, what it says is start bullet journal. Uh, and I've, I've crossed that off. So, well done. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> I'm impressed. I'm impressed. Okay, so well I'm, going up. I'm okay. bringing up a double page. This is, this, got... is my, this is my blank double page. 
Okay, and this is, I mean, this is my interpretation of a weekly log, but this is a layout that's really helpful for me. Do you have a ruler, Simon? Uh, do you know what? I don't think I do. Um, but let's see, I can do a freehand. Harrison, do you have a ruler? <laughs> do you have a ruler? Uh, nah, the school bag's out as mom's. Okay, that's um, fine. What I will use is a copy of, um, I'll use a book. I'll use Enid Blyton's A Faraway Tree. Lovely. Uh, because it's not very good, so I don't mind if I get ink on it. Okay, so I've got my double page. I've got a pen. Okay. I've got a ruler. Cool. So at the top, write weekly log and let it go across both pages. So weekly log across the What's, top. Like like weekly log? Yeah. Like in big yeah. letters? Not too big. Okay. Like, okay. Do it, Should it be... <laughs> <laughs> is, is this like teaching a little kid how to do the most basic of stuff? I'm just, I'm really worried. I'm really nervous. Okay, so should it be like fancy, elaborate writing or should uh, it I'm be... I'm going to show you mine. Oh, yeah, that'll help. But this does have some, you'll have to edit this out because it's got some like client information in it. Okay, well, maybe, <laughs> maybe, maybe don't show it too much. Okay, weekly log. Okay. Weekly log. Oh, yours doesn't say, oh, I see. Okay, so it's just in yeah. the middle. I can, okay, I get yeah. you. Okay, let me do that. And I'm going to try and do some nice handwriting. I have terrible handwriting. Yeah. You know, I'll, I'll do this kind of bubble writing that I used to do in school because I <laughs> I really like it. Um, okay, you do, you do that. I've forgotten how to spell weekly. Okay, so I'm getting weekly log up here. Weekly log. Yeah. And then use your magic faraway tree book to mm -hmm. divide each page into three. So you want a line about a third of the way down and then another line, a dividing line, about two thirds of the way down. Going across. All the way across. So you've got six sections, basically. Mm -hmm. Again, six. Okay. Six sections. Okay, that's uh, there. This is pretty, okay. pretty accurate, I think. Great. Okay, so now I've got my weekly log page. I've got six sections. Lovely. So then you've got uh, a section for each day of the week and one section for the weekend. Ooh, okay. So I'm going to write in Monday. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I like, to write my, I like to write mine in like a little corner so you can see like the day uh -huh. uh, just here in the corner. Oh, nice. And do you yeah. do, do you do, this is again, a, you know, really simple question, but I want to get this right. Do you do Monday down, Tuesday down, Wednesday, or do you do Monday across Tuesday? I go, I go down the left page. Okay. And then down the right page. Monday, Tuesday, um, Wednesday. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is thrilling broadcasting. Smarter than, I, I mean, I think it is. Really, I don't, I don't really care about people. This is for me. <laughs> Okay, this so I love it. So okay. then, um, then, as you have already alluded to, we use bullet points for tasks, and okay. you use a solid bullet for tasks. Now, this is where if you so this, I mean, basically, then you want to write in a simple to do list for each day. Mm -hmm. Now, what's really, really helped me, Simon, because I'm a fundraising consultant and I work with clients, mm -hmm. um, but then I also have to do business development in terms of you know making sure I'm looking after my own business and then I have like all sorts of like kiddie stuff to do in the evenings like sure. taxing my daughter around to her various activities <laughs> so I have I have this gorgeous like mermaidy pencil case okay uh, which I love and uh, looks so super professional but I don't care it's me and then I have pens the pens are so important like when you start okay. bullet journaling you will find the pen for you but I have pens of different colors Okay. And the different colours help me organise the different aspects of my life. Okay. So I have, I have like a turquoise pen for client work. Yeah. I have a purple pen. I sound so tragic. This is. <laughs> 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 I have turquoise for client work. I have purple for business development. I have pink for like home stuff. Mm -hmm. And then if I ever want to do anything nice for myself, it's green. Oh. Uh, yeah. sweet. So different colours for different aspects of your work so if you're a okay. fundraiser with um perhaps responsibility for different areas mm -hmm. you could have for example i mean you you might i mean the wonderful thing about a bullet journal is you can combine work and life together mm. um, and one of the reasons i actually started bullet journaling and i, I hope this story isn't sort of 
too long-winded but I think it's quite important was that something I hated when I was employed was having an appraisal every year Mm -hmm. Um, I hated it it felt like a paper exercise it felt disingenuous it felt it, it never quite felt like um it was a real and true assessment of how I'd done. It was very much a box ticker for the company. Mm, sure. Um, and when I became self-employed, um, and actually I'll, I'll say one good thing about the appraisals I used to have was that I was very much sort of left in, left to my own devices and allowed to set my own objectives. So I was at least allowed a, a bit of autonomy in the way in which I worked and I would set objectives. Um, and that was a motivating factor for me. So actually when I left my job, I really did miss having those objectives and having goals, mm. having to strive for. Um, so I read a book called Your Best Year Yet by American author called Ginny Ditzler. And it basically takes you through an appraisal process. Okay. But what it doesn't do, is it doesn't ask you to separate out your work and your life and the different roles that you play. It mm-hmm. asks you to combine them together and to create a focus for your year and to set objectives within each area. And I went through this uh, using a bullet journal and I went through all the exercises on paper and just having that space away from the computer really, really really helped to Mm -hmm. organize my thoughts better. Uh, And it it just felt really good. It it felt like the appraisal had gone from this kind of awkward, yeah, I, I think awkward is a good word to describe most yeah. appraisals. Yeah. yeah. But it moved yeah. me from something that was awkward and something that was a chore to something that was a real joy and felt like a real investment in me as a fundraiser and in me as a, as a business owner, as a mum, as a partner, all those things. So, so, so are you, do you set like KPIs for yourself in your personal life? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, really... I do. I do. Like what um, kind of stuff? So what kind of stuff? So, well, one of my kind of long-term goals is to be able to do a handstand. I want to be able to do a handstand before I'm 40. Yeah? <laughs> yeah, which is is interesting. Um, I think, and, it's, yeah. and I'm avoiding it because the, the work involved in, like, building up to doing a handstand is quite hard. But you have really? to do like, more kind of strength things. No. You, so, is it not just something you can throw yourself into? Uh, you can, but you might kind of, fall on your ass and look like yeah, a twat. brain damage <laughs> I, I i was th- i was actually thinking about this the other day because i really want to do a forward flip and and i think the thing about a forward flip and i think it's the same about a handstand is if you if you 100 percent commit to it you'll do it <laughs> whereas if you have any fear you're going to land on your head you you can yeah you can still do both though i have a yeah. I, I wrote a whole blog post about me you know getting rid of the fear going for it doing a handstand <laughs> I had the wall there and then yeah. you know like wide open space in the park I went for it yeah. I got up there and then I kind of like toppled over and like fell onto my yeah. back really wow. okay really um, okay <laughs> okay but, but yeah I do so I do set myself objectives yeah for, yeah for life and for and for work yeah and and that's really that's really important to me, and it gives me a drive, and it gives me a focus. And, and it's a mi- it's a mix between you're setting yourself goals and and yeah. um, targets long term and short term and medium yeah. term. It's, okay. Yeah, absolutely. And they change, they mm-hmm. change. And and I I do believe that if organisations were to recognise that we are not we are fundraisers, but we're not just fundraisers. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, this links into some of the um, charity well work that Claire Warner's doing at the moment, um, mm. which is so important. Um, I'm going to tell this story, and yeah, you know, I hope I hope the person involved. I, I partially hope she listens, and I partially hope she doesn't. But do you, do you want to give her a fake name? Let Let's call her Sandra. I don't think I need to just call her Sandra. Okay, so Sandra was my line manager and it came to appraisal time. And at the time I've been a fundraiser for many, many years. Um, but I was also a single parent and I was struggling with a bit of seasonal affective disorder. Mm-hmm. I was struggling to do anything productive in the evenings. I was feeling tired. I was feeling quite lonely. Um, and I made the decision to... Um, 
to pursue a long-held dream to become a dance aerobics instructor. Mm -hmm. True story. I'd always wanted to do a fitness instructor qualification. I love dance. I always, um, and I wanted to go to a dance class, but because I had to pay for a babysitter as well mm -hmm. as the cost of the class, and I lived in rural North Cornwall, there really weren't many options. It wasn't financially feasible. So I thought, well, if I do the course, I'm doing something good for myself. Yeah. I am increasing my fitness. I am hopefully shaking off this kind of mild seasonal, I don't really want to call it depression because it wasn't depression, but it was a mild seasonal um, something. Lethargy. Mm. Yeah. Um, yeah, lethargy. Yeah. Lethargy? And, How do you pronounce it? I don't yeah, know. Yeah. Yeah. I was feeling lethargic due to mm -hmm. the lethargy. So, <laughs> so I sat down in my appraisal and my boss Sandra was we sort of talked through you know how the year had gone I'd hit all my targets I'd exceeded them in some cases it mm -hmm. was all good and then I said right I'm going to do this course this is this is my plan for the year um it's going to improve my life on many levels and I'm confident that it will improve my performance at work mm -hmm. and she went very quiet and then in the next <laughs> and then in our next one to one she produced um, her institute fundraising uh, certificate. Uh, she'd done the diploma. Mm -hmm. and she produced the certificate, and she she said, "Oh, I got this today, and you know, you know, I've been working on this several months, and I'm really proud of it. And you should consider doing it too." And I just remember thinking, "But I told you that my goal and my focus for this year is is to do a dance fitness qualification. Yeah. <laughs> I told you why, and." Yeah. Um, and I just, I just found like, it just felt like she'd pissed all over my dream. <laughs> Let's be really honest. Yeah. It felt like she'd kind of pissed all over my dreams a bit. I don't think it was intentional. I think she was yeah. being supportive in her own way. And I think, you know, she was very focused on process. You know, she was there to manage me, a member mm -hmm. of her team, responsible for fundraising, responsible for delivering a big target every year. Mm -hmm. And she felt that the way in which I should be doing that would be through a fundraising mm -hmm. practice, a fundraising development. Um, so I, well, I do appreciate Sandra's point of view, but I also think that, um, that nurturing ourselves outside of work will make us better at work. Absolutely. At work. I, I think probably what, what's happening there, and I think we're probably all guilty of it, is you know we all know we have our own challenges and our own family and our own personal dreams and stuff like that. But then we go into the office and we forget everyone else also has those personal dreams and personal yeah. family and things that we assume they're only, um, it, you know, they're only in our world. They're only in our world. They don't exist outside of our world. And I think it's like a human failing that we, everyone we interact with, everyone we see, we only think they're there as, as cast in our movie, whereas yeah. actually they've all got their own movie. Um, and once you kind of realize that, that they're all going through their own challenges, you become better at interacting with them. Absolutely. And I don't blame Sandra. And I remember her telling the team, I mean, she, she didn't open up a lot, but then she told us how much she loved to, to do art and craft using driftwood. And she showed us some of the things that she'd made. Wow. And it made me like her more. Yeah. Um, and, you know, another manager I had, again, was, was just wonderful because she would share an office with us and she would sit back occasionally and she'd go, oh, I'm just having a really shit day. This person is making things hard and I'm finding it hard. And mm -hmm. to hear your manager be really honest and open about finding something hard, and finding mm -hmm. a personality mm -hmm. difficult, mm -hmm. it's just so refreshing. Yeah. It Absolutely. makes work so much easier when people yeah. want to open up a bit and show a bit of personality. Yeah, I love that. So, I mean, I think that's a key thing, you know, to come back to bullet journals. Um, like what you're telling me there is it's not just about work that it's and it's not just about personal life but it's the yeah. fact that now we live lives that everything overlaps yeah. um and, and we need to acknowledge that in our in our bullet journal which i like yeah, yeah. so back to your week should we go back to your weekly log yeah can bring, bring me back so, to my weekly log so where i start with my weekly log simon so you're a, again you're a fundraising consultant i'm a fundraising consultant so what i do is i start by writing in which client i'm working for on which day or which projects I'm working on. Mm -hmm. um, so I work for several clients at once, and mm -hmm. I do not like to work for more than one client on one day because it gets messy. 
Mm. Um, and I would imagine there are fundraisers out there. Perhaps you have um, different areas of responsibility. You know, if you're able to get the biggest tasks in your week before your week happens, and tasks mm-hmm. have a bullet next to them. Um, if you're going to an event, that's a circle. Okay. Um, and you might want to use a different colour for that. Okay, let me let me do an event while while we're talking because I mean, say this week is for next week. Um, so next yeah. week I am at uh, I'm speaking at an event on the Wednesday. Great. So so I, I'll put it in a little circle and write it in. Write it at the top. That's your main thing that you need to do that day. Okay, so I'm doing a little circle. It's the Directory of Social Change. Um, the Directory of Social Change. I've got two presentations that I'm mm-hmm. doing there. Cool. Do I need to do any details of it? I mean, I, actually, I read something on public channels that it's it's for me, so it's not about overcomplicating it. But if I see that, I know exactly what it is. I don't need to do more details. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Okay. Um, so, sort of, yeah. Anything, any calendarized appointment um, will need to go in there. I would say mm-hmm. first and foremost, because those are the things that you can't forget about. Um, okay. So if you need to be somewhere that isn't your home or your office, then. Yeah, get those in an event and you denote an event with a circle. Um, and then any important tasks relating to projects or clients, again, you can pop those in. Now, if you've got a very, very busy day ahead, you might want a separate page for a day. Um, so, yeah, okay. you can either set that out um, on its own or you can, you can go and look at some of the layouts online. Just sim- simply to make more space, I mean, give you more space to get into more detail about it, if it's like Absolutely. a step by step by step. Yeah, if you've got um, if you've got a day with a lot of tasks that you need mm-hmm. to get through. Um, I mean, I have those days sometimes where it's, it is so overwhelming. I know I've got so many little things that I need to get through. Um, mm-hmm. so ideally, if you can sit down the night before, um, have a whole page for that day and just write down the tasks mm-hmm. with the books. Um, that, so, so yeah. say, say for ex- say for example, uh, next week, um, when am I when am I doing this? Say uh, on the Thursday, um, no, not the Thursday. Let's say the Monday. Uh, obviously, I have my fundraising everywhere virtual conference coming up. I have I have bits and pieces to do. So, say on Monday, I've got various tasks to do for fundraising everywhere. Yeah. Um, then I would put that in as a as a solid bullet point for fundraising so- everywhere. If it was me, I mean, it's yours mm-hmm. and you get to choose, but if it was me, I would bullet fundraising everywhere at the top. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. If you've got the space to write the different tasks in that little box, go for it. But if not, okay. you might want Monday to have a separate page for itself. Okay. Well, there's not too much, so let me put it in here. So I'm going to do, like, fundraising everywhere, and then I'm going to do sub sub things, yeah. which yeah. which are, like, uh, I have to do some subtitles on the video. You're, get, you're getting... Um, a glimpse into how lame my life is uh, <laughs> subtitles on the video um i need to do um what's the other stuff i need to do i can't even remember this is why um, great you've got, you've got the space to think about yeah. it now yeah okay well let's uh well let's um let's do some uh promo um tweets that's a that's assume that i'm going to do some promo tweets on that day so i would have these kind of subtasks in here which are relating to fundraising yeah. everywhere so i know i have to do that yeah, yeah. I mean, this so, works really, really, really well for me. I'm a, I'm a high value fundraiser and I do some, a couple of contracts at the moment where I'm actually doing trusts and foundations work mm-hmm. and I work on big bids. So for me, I'm usually only working on perhaps maybe like two or three tasks for a client in a day. So like mm-hmm. three tasks fits beautifully into that, into one half of that box. Mm-hmm. Um, so that, that's working really, really well for me. So, so next week, when next week comes around, I'm obviously I'm referring to this um, the day before to kind of remind me. I'm referring to it throughout the day. Am I crossing these off as I do them, or yeah, absolutely? What? So pop across through as they're done. Um, mm-hmm. I mean, don't forget to sort of put in any kind of evening appointments that you have, any fun social things that you're doing, um, none, any none. any like dad appointments that you've got. Oh my god! Yeah, dad appointments very important. Dinner. I have to cook dinner, I have to, oh no, I do that every day. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so I suppose in terms of definitely like the school uh, school run stuff, um, because I co-parent, 
Um, yep. Sometimes it changes, sometimes it's a bit flexible and I need to keep tracking it. So what I might have here is almost like, uh, well, a different color, certainly, yeah. um, but notes about when and where I need to be yeah. sorting Harrison. Yeah, and, okay. and what I love to do, um, if I have the time, I, I don't always, but I should probably make it, is like on a Friday or, or sometimes on the weekend, I like to take my bullet journal and my pencil case and I go out and I treat myself to a cup of coffee somewhere nice and I will map out the week that's to come. Ooh, I like that. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I call it, um, I call it stewardship for the self. You know, we fundraisers are so good at looking after our donors and nurturing them and giving giving some thought and some time to what they might appreciate. We we have to do the same practice for ourselves. And I saw that you run a Facebook group, um, yeah. uh, Stewardship for the Self, which I love the name of. I think it's genius. Thank you. I did, well, I'm, well, I'm doing, um, it's a bit quiet at the moment, um, but I have been running bullet journal challenges in there. So Ooh. back in June, I did Concern Worldwide's Refugee Challenge. Okay. A week challenge where basically you eat for a week the rations um, yeah. equivalent yeah. to a Syrian refugee in Jordan. That's cool. Basically cool. eating rice, lots of rice and some beans and chickpeas mm -hmm. for a whole week. Um, mm -hmm. And I, I devised a little bullet journal challenge along the side of that, which was absolutely wonderful. No one joined in, but <laughs> but it didn't, it didn't matter. You know, it was. Yeah, it, I um, do. I do it now. I'll do it next time. Cool. Well, you should join. Come and join okay. us. And, um, well, I, I'm trying to avoid Facebook because it's evil. You should I know. Set up, do it somewhere else. I'm going to have a digital detox this month, apart from a little bit of sort of promotion work. I'm, I'm yeah. going to have a digital detox because it's terribly distracting. But, yeah. Uh, but yeah, every morning I basically had a journaling prompt. And then underneath, I encouraged people to write some gratitude. So uh, again, so you can see that. So that was like ration challenge. And you can go into the group and you can go and look at these, but they're journaling prompts and then with some gratitudes underneath. Um, <laughs> and it's, I, I really, I feel such benefit from writing things down and, and making space in my day. It's really interesting, actually. I, th I think this practice has actually really improved my fundraising practice. I thought, yeah. I thought for so many years that um, certainly major gift fundraising was about confidence and connection you know, name dropping, being memorable, having a really big personality. And then I had this, this incredible paradigm shift after meeting a couple of fundraisers, major gift fundraisers, in extraordinarily proficient major gift fundraisers who were not like that at all. They were quiet. Mm -hmm. They were very self-assured. They had real, um, a real dignity in the way they presented themselves and they were amazing listeners. And I had um, uh, Charlie White, who used to work at the National Trust, and she was my mentor for a bit. And I was just this like bubbly kind of terrier of a fundraiser, um, good at making connections with people, but not then so good at going away, making space, mm. thinking about my donor, getting into their headspace, mm -hmm. mapping out on paper, um, you know, why they might be interested in making a gift, what their motivations were, what their interest what their areas of interest might be, what their mm -hmm. connections were. Doing that cultivation planning in a quiet space using analog tools, I think is essential for good major gift fundraising. And we are so busy mm. in our offices mm -hmm. these days. And the whole point of the bullet journal is to, is to, is, is, is a tool that stops, uh, that, that differentiates between being busy and being productive. Hmm. It's, it's interesting because one of the people who peer pressured me to start bullet journaling is um, is Nikki Bell, who we both know, um, and we we do a session on fundraising for introverts, um, and it's about how you know how to be a good fundraiser sometimes is in contradiction to the being an introvert. But actually, what I realized is all the things we talked about were about preparation and organization. So you know you can't change necessarily your your anxiety and your brain and the you know your introvertness but you can control your organization. Um, and so a lot of the things we were talking about in terms of networking, in terms of reaching out to donors and talking, to become more comfortable, it's just about being better prepared. Um, and I think that's maybe what a lot of us fundraisers are lacking because we, um, we're always chasing our tail. You know, we're always trying to catch up. We're always overworked. But actually, like you said, sometimes stepping back can be the most productive thing you can do. 
hugely hugely we can't always do that in our roles and i i get that you know we have to be reactive to a degree mm. but, to a degree but to a degree yeah and and managers and leaders i think need to encourage everybody in their team to make a bit of space for planning for reflection mm. Mm. Um, yeah yes yeah, it's, okay. it's so important <laughs> Okay, so here's my weekly log. Uh, I'll, I, I won't bore you with it and do it. I'll do the rest of it later. But essentially, you know, this is what I'm going to use next week. It's going to remind me of all the things I need to do next week. It's taking into account my calendar, um, but it's also taking into account breaking down some of the individual tasks. Cool. So I'm good. You like it? Good. And what I might do, Simon, just give myself some more work. I might um, map out some template um template uh, pages in a bullet journal and put them in the stewardship stewardship of self group on Facebook and possibly share okay. them as well. So that cool. if people are listening to this, but they really, really want that visual representation, um, I could I could do that as well. Yeah, that would be really helpful. For people. Um, yeah, because as I say, the ones, the ones I have at the moment are, are confidential. So. Yeah, <laughs> then, absolutely. Uh, yeah, I have to hope that no one ever steals my bullet journal. It would be really <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's the risk of losing it. So every week uh, I'm going to do this for the next week. Um, yeah. And then during the week I'm going to go through, I'm going to tick this off. Um, yeah. So that's, that's the weekly log aspect yeah. of my bu bullet journal. I've got a really cool daily log template. Mm -hmm. um, this, is a, this is a Tim Ferriss one, actually. Okay. So uh, take a page, take a fresh mm -hmm. page, mm -hmm. and divide it into three, and make the middle section a little bit bigger than the, the section on the top and the section on the bottom. Okay. So again, I'm going to do, I'll do it like this, um, and kind of like that, that kind of thing. Oh, this is my lines. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. The, the bit at the top yeah. is quite small, but you can write small. Okay. okay. <laughs> so yeah. in the middle... At yeah. the top, the middle section, write daily log. Uh -huh. And that's an ex that's kind of an extension of the boxes that you had going on in the weekly log. It just gives you more space if you've got a really busy day with a lot on, a lot of little tasks in different areas. You know, you know those days, um, you know, if you have a busy life outside of work and you have to use your evenings to get through, you know, life admin, if you have kids, but then a busy job if you've got meetings but other tasks that you need to complete. A separate mm -hmm. page for a day can be really, really helpful. And if you can map it out the day before, come to it fresh in the morning, mm -hmm. you're going to have a more productive day. So that space in the middle is for all of the tasks that you need to do on any given day. Right, okay. At the top, okay. this, this may or may not work for you. Mm -hmm. Give it a try. Be open. Try. Right. I am. Ditch it if you need to. So at the top, write, today will be awesome if... And then you need to write three things that will make your day awesome. And it can be the simplest of things. So for me, so I've been traveling a bit recently and I've been looking after my daughter a lot. She's, um, she's not been with her dad last week and it was half term. Mm -hmm. So I've not done a lot of exercise. And if I don't do exercise, I go a bit crazy. So for me, today was going to be awesome if I could do some exercise. Um, so that's like one. Um, mm -hmm. If you've got a massive piece of work, a big frog that you need to eat, um, that could be part of your today will be awesome list. Um, mm -hmm. If you've got a very busy day, then maybe your day will be awesome if you take 20 minutes at lunchtime to go for a walk outdoors. Oh, I like that. So they okay. so don't have to be like big, scary things. Just Just three things that, you know, you can end the day knowing they're complete, knowing that you're going to feel better if you've done them. Okay, well let's um, let's uh, be productive there. So let's um, let's do it for for tomorrow, for okay. example. If I yeah. think about what I have on tomorrow, I have one meeting tomorrow, um, and then I'm hanging out with my son Harrison because it's um, uh, midterm. Um, so if I say, for example, you know, from the meeting, um, would I go as far as to say that I might develop some business out of this out of this meeting? Is that going to be an awesome day, or am I setting myself up for a fall? don't think so no if that's okay, if that's yeah. your objective for that meeting that okay. needs to be the focus um okay cool so uh i'll say today will be autumn if it's a successful meeting yeah um, I'll, I'll say successful because that might not necessarily be business but it might just be kind of opening up the door for something else sure. um me and my son are playing uh, luigi's mansion 
uh, on Nintendo Switch. So I'll say if we complete, um, you know, complete chapter of Luigi's Mansion, um, that'll make me very happy. Um, <laughs> and then I think, you know, this idea of getting out and having a walk or getting, you know, getting, getting headspace, um, I'll put it in as a walk or a swim. Um, yeah. So one of those things I know is good for my mental health. It's part of my my kind of uh, medical program to look after myself. So yeah. to do, today will be awesome. Um, and to, by today, I mean tomorrow, um, if yeah. those three things happen. I cool. like that. Cool. At the bottom, you can mm -hmm. divide that bottom section into two. Okay. Down the middle or down across? The middle. Yeah, down the middle. Like that, like that way? Yeah. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. I'm so afraid um, you're going you're gonna to shout at me for getting something wrong. No, you're okay. perfect. That looks great. So in mm -hmm. one section, I invite you to write gratitudes at the top. Mm -hmm. And during the day, just note down a couple of things that you're feeling grateful for. Ah, oh, that's nice. So I I'll, do that. I'll do that tomorrow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then in the other section, and this is where it gets a little bit woo-woo, you can write mantras. So if there's something you want to remind yourself of, you know, Ooh. if you've got, if you, if there's a message that you need to hear before you go into that meeting, um, hmm. then, like can, yeah, then you can write that down there. Huh. So um, I'm trying to think of some examples. I mean, I, I don't use mantras a lot. Yeah. It's not a massive part of my practice, but when I do, it feels good. And there's sometimes there are some things that I need to hear. So a uh, years ago when I was training for a marathon, um, my, my friends and I used to go for a run and we were finding it hard. We would just repeat over and over and over, I am a Marine. I am a Marine. <laughs> <laughs> so, so if there's something that you need to hear on that particular yeah. day, if there's something that you just wake up and you feel a bit rubbish and there is a sentence or a thought that might, that might help you in yeah. dragging yeah. yourself out of a bad place or... Um, yeah. Yeah, a, a little mantra, something that you might want to write down tomorrow, or not. You know, it yeah. works. Yeah. It works. It, it doesn't. No, I like I like that. And so it, it might even be like something you hear someone say, or you know, someone what you know, something very positive that someone says to you, a, a kind of success around that, something that you want to stick with you. Yeah, I mean, Instagram is a wonderful place for inspirational quotes. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that kind of thing. You know, yeah, like okay. when you're laughing. Oh, God, please <laughs> stop. Um, yeah. Okay. I'll, I'll find a good mantra that suits me. Um, but I like that. I like that mantra thing. And I might do it in fancy writing and fancy colors so that when I flick back, yeah. it's kind of stuff jumps out at me. Yeah. If I can't find a mantra or if there's nothing that's sort of jumping out at me, um, I do, you know, I do try and read. And my bullet journal, I find, is a wonderful place to write down quotes from books. Mm. So, um, so, I mean, I read a wonderful book recently and it got like a whole double page spread on my bullet journal. And I'll share, I mean, I'll share this one. Um, and it, it was, uh, it was Rest by Alex Sujung Kim Pang. Oh, uh, yeah. Holidays. So I did this on my lounger by yeah. the pool on holiday. And it, I just, it's, it's such a nurturing thing. And if you're reading a wonderful book, yeah. you know, to be able to write down quotes in your bullet journal so you don't forget them again i i use my bullet journal if i ever hear a, a quote or something that i don't want to forget then i use my bullet journal to write it down yeah um, another i mean i'll just another wonderful way of using bullet journals obviously you can use it to organize your life you know for your diary so you know what you're doing in a week you know what you're doing in a day um that that weekly log that you've done is also something that you can do um called a future log where you map out the next six months. Okay. And you zoom out and you think, actually, what am I doing over the next six months? What are the most important things that I want to achieve in each month? Mm -hmm. So that would be your future log. And that would be um, in the same kind of layout. I would have future log here and I would have the six sections. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you, so you could have a, a sort of, I'm just going to do like a rough one here. I won't do the lines. But you'd have a future log. And would you do it, you'd actually write the months in. So November. Yeah. Okay. So if we were yeah. going to yeah. say no, November. Yeah. And if you have an appraisal and you have objectives that you're expected to work to on a 12-month um, schedule, then mm -hmm. a future log is a really, really good way to keep track of those 
uh, bigger kind of year long goals. Mm -hmm. um, so in in here, I might put something like obviously in November we have the fundraising every, everywhere conference. So yeah. I've got uh, fundraising everywhere, um, and then one of the key things there is actually we'll be launching the twenty twenty um, tickets. Um, and so this is this is something that um, it's a big significant thing in November that I'm putting in here just to keep it in the in the front of my mind that it's coming yeah. up. And okay. and to know that you know that the little things that might crowd in around it aren't as important. Mm. Well, that makes sense. That makes sense. Okay, oh. I like that. Cool. Can we take a loo break? <laughs> what else? What else? Yeah. Do you need a loo break? Yeah. I mean, this is live, but yeah, sure. <laughs> oh, yeah. Sorry, guys. Simon, yeah. Simon work on his future log. I'll be back in a second. I'll let it out. <laughs> Just make sure you turn your microphone off. Hey, this is Simon Scriver. And this is Nikki Bell. We are running a virtual fundraising conference on November 19th. It's called Fundraising Everywhere, and you can find it at fundraisingeverywhere.com. There's some amazing speakers that we've got lined up for you. We've got some names on there that you will be familiar with and some speakers that you may not have heard before, but all of them will be sharing amazing fundraising methods that are proven to work, and they will be teaching us how to do that in our own charities. We've tried to make it really affordable for all organizations, but for small charities, it is completely free. Please. So go look at it at fundraisingeverywhere.com. Register now. Join us. It will be accessible. It will be affordable. And it is amazing. Yes. <laughs> okay. So that's, that's, a taste, that's a taste of the future log. Um, mm -hmm. Is there anything else I need to specifically know about the future log? But it's, it's really just a, it's a rolling six-month calendar. It is, yeah, yeah, and and the bullet journals are, are such a wonderful tool for zooming out to big, you know, ambitious, will take a long time to achieve goals, and mm -hmm. also zooming right into the present and what do I have to do in this moment to be mm -hmm. most productive. Mm -hmm. So, um, so yeah, you know, the future log is a great place to kind of record things that are going to be happening over the next six months but then also you can use your bullet journal as a place to um record your bigger goals and your bigger dreams mm -hmm. things that you really want to achieve um so yeah and there's lot you know there's lots of different ways you can record that um i mean i i just i mean i like keeping it simple like a bullet mm -hmm. point list um you know a, a journal you know freehand just writing prose um, you can use it as a place to, to just just write that kind of mm -hmm. stream of consciousness kind of practice. Mm -hmm. um, another useful thing that I think is brilliant for fundraisers is something called collections. Okay. So, collection, so this would be a new page. Is um, is kind of a topic related list. So mm -hmm. it's not related specifically to your diary or to your calendar. Mm -hmm. This is where it can be helpful to have an index at the beginning of your bullet journal so you don't get okay. lost. Yeah. But, um, I mean, a collection, for example, is if you've got a big project on, something like fundraising everywhere, mm -hmm. you can use your bullet journal um, to record in one place every task that's sort of currently on your mind relating to fundraising everywhere. I mean, okay. Fundraisers who are event managers, this, this is a really fantastic tool. Um, you and, could, I mean, and it's, I mean, it's a list, it's again, it's a title and then bullet points, just a yeah. brain dump of everything. Yeah, one big list. I mean, for mm. something as big as fundraising everywhere, what you might want to do is set up its own future log because you're going to have big lists for each month leading up to that event. Yeah. Um, oh. And often with an event, especially if it's a new event, you need to kind of reverse engineer the activities um, starting with the event itself and then thinking backwards also in order for that to happen then what needs to happen back here mm. so a collection wow. is a topic based page or pages that relates to a topic and not necessarily to um, an event um, a sort of specific time so they're not mm -hmm. sort of categorized mm -hmm. um, so yeah so for example yeah i mean i, I think fundraising everywhere is a good example Okay, so I'm going to put fundraising everywhere at the top. Yeah. 
Um, and I'm gonna, I'm just gonna write collection so that I remember. Yeah. That's what it's called. Cool. Okay. And really, you're talking bullets. Yeah, like brain dump. Yeah, brain dump. Okay. Um, um, so, for example, one of the things, not necessarily for this year, but long term, is is we want um, foreign subtitles. Yeah. For example, so that's the kind of thing I might put in, like really just like this is, I don't know when, I don't know where, but this is one of the things that we need to do. Yeah, everything out of the head, into the page. Mm -hmm. Okay. And we would just list it down here. And then, as you said, you're reverse engineering back to your six month plan, back to your weekly plan. Mm -hmm. This is the stuff that's going to create this. Absolutely. So when you're looking at your weekly log, you can cross-reference your projects, your collections, mm -hmm. and you can take tasks from the collections and put them into your weekly log. I'm going to draw a little um, planet. Um, can I draw it? Yeah, do you want to help me draw a planet? Okay. We, <laughs> we, or you can draw a new one there if you want, okay. whichever you prefer. So... Um, I mean, I mean, because I do like that, you know, I'm not an artist and I'm not, you know, um, but I do like people's bullet journals, how they look kind of uh, artsy. You know, even you, you're saying yours is quite simple, but you can see the different colors and the different layouts makes it a bit visually interesting. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, and I mean, for example, like, oh, I almost don't want to show this because it's really tragic, but it's OK to keep it simple. So here we are. So here are my plans for for my house so we need to do some work in our house and i'm uh, like it's in oh. a house so a little space for each room and tasks for each room thank you <laughs> okay there's uh harrison's attempt at the planet that's good and sometimes uh, yeah sometimes i let my daughter just go nuts in my bullet journal and just give her some pens and let her do something and then that's just so lovely when i'm at work yeah that's cute yeah, i like that i mean I don't know what this thing is sticking up, but <laughs> fair enough. Um, okay. The um, what, what, were, what were you just saying there about? Oh, yeah. One of the things that I saw, which I really liked, was um, you can buy these stencils with little shapes and stuff, and you use those to de to add into your bullet journal. Uh, I, I think I'm going to pick me up one yeah. of those. Bullet journaling is like big business. I mean, you know, this is this is my this is my old bullet journal, and it's. Um, I like plain pages. Really hard to get notebooks with plain pages, actually. Yeah. Um, most notebooks have lined pages, which I think inhibits creativity a bit. Mm. Um, a lot, lots of people like like the dots. You've got squares in yours. Um, different things work for different people, and you just have to try out um, different layouts, see what you like. But yeah, I mean, bullet jet, bullet journey is big business. Um, there are <laughs> lots of people selling. Um, selling layouts, printable layouts that yeah. you can buy and put, and put into your journal, um, stickers. I actually treated myself recently to a happy planner. So happy planner is not paying me. Um, yeah. And it's just like, oh, it's so Ooh. beautiful. Oh, um, that's very nice. Yeah, and I've got like month by month tabs and I've got stickers and um, and there's wow. actually there's actually a weekly layout in here that, that I really like. Um, so if you see something, you know, for sale that you like, uh, I, I like the, I like the coloured ring ring binders as well. They're yeah, really they're really riding the yoga mum uh, gravy train to the bank, aren't they? I think they are, and they're really hard to get hold of in the UK. So I have spent yeah. a shocking shocking amount of money on mine. Um, I'm going to have to make it last. <laughs> you shouldn't you should import them uh, i'm stealing your house idea because that's actually really i really like that because there's a few you know there's a number of things i want to do in my apartment a number of little yeah. tweaks and actually um that's a nice little thing absolutely i'm just going on a walk simon because my um my battery's low so i need to plug okay. you in that's terribly right. disorganized isn't it that's all right no it's very uh we're keeping it real on this podcast on this youtube <laughs> channel <laughs> um, okay, I like that house idea. Anything else that you think I should really? Oh, look, there's a cameo by uh, the Owl of Lark Owl. No, um, by... wait. Hello. Hello, how are you? Thank you for joining me on the podcast. <laughs> We're live. <laughs> um, anything else um, that you would strongly recommend I test? I mean, obviously, I'm going to be finding my own feet. I'm going to be looking at other bullet journals. I'm going to be keeping an eye on your stuff. Anything else is a priority yeah. I really need to crack into on this? No, I think 
I think keep it basic. So future log, weekly log, daily log. Mm-hmm. Um, I think tre- you've treated yourself to a new book. That's great. I think from a mind from a mindset perspective, I think that's a lovely thing. Mm-hmm. Um, sorry, just plugging in. That's all right. And are you you're carrying this around with you the whole time? You're um, yeah. Like this is yeah. this is a fixture in your life. Oh yeah, I d- yeah, absolutely, absolutely, and it's 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 just um, it just feels like a really nourishing practice. That sounds terribly yeah, yeah. and yoga mum. Live, really laugh, live laugh, love, love. Yeah. Uh, do, you, do you use it if you're if you go to a conference or if you're meeting with a client? Do you use it to take notes or is that kind of bastardizing it? Uh, that would be uh, yeah, that would be ruining it. So um, if I'm yeah, no, I did I did use mine actually at Institute of Fundraising convention, and there are some notes from convention in here which I then I think took pictures of and shared mm-hmm. online. Um, but yeah, no, look, I've got some quotes in here from um, the IOF convention oh nice what's that talk? uh you are being paid is that what it says you are being paid as a leader not just ah. to follow instructions <laughs> oh that's nice that's um, good yeah this event is free to attend but it's expensive to leave <laughs> <laughs> okay that's good that was um that was mahini ratura brown from unicef yeah, it's good. I like that. Yeah. So I do take it to conferences, actually, because, again, I think conferences are a place where you've given yourself um, or your organisation has given you the opportunity for for learning and reflection. And, and yeah, I mm-hmm. think, yeah, absolutely. And I, I actually made some plans beforehand. I think I was inspired. Um, again, Nikki Bell did a, a blog post about how to make the most of a conference. And oh, how yeah. To make sure you get the most out of it. So I did some my own notes and my own thoughts about how I was going to, um, oh no, it's there. Oh, yeah. yeah, making so the most of iOS. Yeah. So really focusing your mind before yeah. an event or before um, something you're going to focusing your event. It's like this is what I want to get out of it. This is what I'm going to yeah. do. Um, yeah. Just it's it's just about organizing our crazy, insane brains. Absolutely, it really is. Um, it's fascinating when you look back on your past bullet journals as well. I've got loads now. Um, yeah. Looking back on them is really interesting. Um, I don't use them for client work. I have a separate notebook for that. Okay. okay. But I will, I will, you know, other than the daily log and the weekly log and organising my key tasks for clients, my, my notes that I take from meetings and the mm-hmm. notes that I make when I'm working for a client, that happens separately. Okay. That's good. Okay. Well, what I'm going to do, because I don't want to keep you too long because actually I've had your ages. Um, I'm going <laughs> to, I'm going to go off and I'm going to use this week to week and see how we go. Um, and if it's okay, I might come back to you and just ask you a few more questions and just kind of really publicly figure this out together um, because you, you've been very helpful. I'm really glad. I'm really glad. I, I, I think it's a wonderful tool. I think it, it's, it can really help us become more productive. Mm-hmm. And I think that the practices of recording um, and organizing that a bullet journal encourages us to do, I think are incredibly compatible with a lot of the tasks that we have to do as fundraisers. So yeah. I recommend it wholeheartedly to people who are fundraisers and, and to people who are not as well. Yeah, all right, let's try it. Well, I, I'm going to try it. This is new for me. Um, cool. So other, other people who maybe want to talk to you or follow you or understand you um, or get advice, not just on bullet journals, but fundraising <laughs> as well, uh, where's the best place for them to find you? Um. Well, our website is larkowl.uk. Yeah. .co.uk. Um, no, larkowl.uk. Oh, is it? Oh, sorry. Sorry for correcting <laughs> you. For mansplaining <laughs> your website. <laughs> That's okay. Larkowl.uk. Okay. Larkowl.uk. Um, so, I mean, there's some stuff about us on there. I write a blog weekly. Mm-hmm. Um, and I usually go into quite a lot of detail. Um yeah around I like all it. sorts of topics mostly sort of high value fundraising trust um trust fundraising mainly at the moment I'm working mm-hmm. on a trust fundraising course um so yeah go and check out the blog on our website um we also have a facebook group called stewardship for the self where Great. it is a bit quiet at the moment um where i encourage people to share some 
the, the things that they're doing in their bullet journals. And we talk about analog tools. So, you know, the importance of not just bullet journaling, but things like, like reading and anything that gets us away from screens. Yeah. Um, yeah. That is, yeah, that's a nice, a nice space for people to have these conversations. I like that. Um, I like and we're on Twitter as well. Yeah. Lark Owl UK. Lark Owl UK. And you're on yeah. Twitter as well as Caroline Danks. Uh, my, my handle that I use is, is yeah. Lark Owl UK. Oh, just, okay. Sorry. I, that's twice now I've corrected you and uh, made a complete dick of myself. So <laughs> I'll leave it in. Um, but anyway, I mean, I don't expect everyone to remember this. I'll put all these links uh, within the description. You'll find, uh, if you're listening or watching this, you'll find those links below. So you can find oh. Caroline. Stop listening to me. <laughs> <laughs> and I will, I will mock up some, um, some layouts in, in my bullet journal and, and post those in the stewardship self group, but also I'll pop them on Twitter. Um, That'd be cool. So, so people can sort of copy them and get started. It's yeah. Yeah, yeah. that's really helpful because it is seeing it, seeing someone else's uh, and someone talking through it. I found I found that really helpful. So I really appreciate that, and I, I'll definitely be keeping an eye on what else you share, um, and I'll push it out there. Thank you. Thank you very much. I've really, really enjoyed this. Have you? Good. Thank you very much, Caroline. It's been really nice to talk to you. Sorry again for correcting you incorrectly. <laughs> Um, and uh, yeah, thank you so much for all your help. It's been great. Thanks, Simon. I'll talk to you again. Thank you. Cool. You've been listening to Simon Scriver's Amazingly Ultimate Fundraising Superstar Podcast. Don't forget to subscribe and head over to changefundraising.com to learn more or get in touch with Simon. Or don't, whatever. You're big enough to make your own decisions. Hey, this is Simon Scriver. And this is Nikki Bell. We are running a virtual fundraising conference on November 19th. It's called Fundraising Everywhere, and you can find it at fundraisingeverywhere.com. There's some amazing speakers that we've got lined up for you. We've got some names on there that you will be familiar with and some speakers that you may not have heard before, but all of them will be sharing amazing fundraising methods that are proven to work, and they will be teaching us how to do that in our own charities. We've tried to make it really affordable for all organizations, but for small charities, it is completely free. Free. So go look at it at fundraisingeverywhere.com. Register now join us. It will be accessible. It will be affordable. And it is amazing. Yes.